I want to apologize to you. Vanessa Williams returned to the Miss America stage last night after 32 years. She was crowned Miss America in 1984, becoming the first African American to win the competition. However, she soon resigned after a nude photo scandal. Last night, Williams served as the head judge for this year's pageant. She also received an apology from the current CEO of the Miss America organization for the way the scandal was handled. Williams accepted the apology and said it was unexpected but beautiful. Hi again and good morning everyone. Thanks for waking up with the Valley today. I'm Lisa Badeau here with Kyle Bosch, 10 minutes before 7. And we're starting our nonstop news and weather to the top of the hour to help you plan your day. Police say a father and son found dead in their west central Minnesota home are victims of an apparent murder-suicide. The Douglas County Sheriff's Office says they got a call just before 6 Saturday night about two men in a home that they shared in Brandon who were hurt and not breathing. Deputies found the bodies of 59-year-old Edward Hooper and 30-year-old Robert Hooper in that home. An autopsy revealed that Edward died of two gunshot wounds. His son, Robert, died of a self-inflicted gunshot wound. The six people who will pick Fargo's next police chief get down to work today. Mayor Tim Mahoney, City Commissioner Dave Pepcorn, two police officers and two citizens make up a committee that will review the list of 22 applicants from across the country. The goal is to narrow that list to four or six. The list includes interim chief David Todd and Lieutenant Joel Vettel. The plan is to have a new chief hired next month. 651 means it's time to get a look at weather and traffic on the ones and we start with meteorologist Lisa Green. Good morning, you guys. We have a great start to our day. A little on the cloudy side initially, but we'll get some sunshine coming in here today, and that'll help us out with temperatures rising into the 70s today in a lot of places. This morning, not nearly as cold as we were starting off last week. We're in the 50s to start, 57 degrees in Fargo with mostly cloudy skies initially. And looking ahead toward the noon hour, 69 degrees at that point with mostly sunny skies. Back into the 70s, even some upper 70s, getting close to 80 by 5. 5 o'clock in the afternoon in the Southern Valley. Wind becomes a little more easterly and should be a pretty nice day. Here's a look outside. Again, we have a few clouds or a lot of clouds uh, keeping us on the gray side of things initially to start off. So 54 degrees is our current temperature. New wind out of the north at 14 miles per hour. One area where we're in the 40s, Langdon and over toward Devil's Lake, 46 degrees and 48 respectively. 54 again in Fargo, 51 in Grand Forks, much warmer to the south and east. We're at 60 in Bemidji and 63 to start in Sisseton, Fergus Falls, 57, which should be on the light side. So heading out to the bus stop, not too bad. A little bit of a breeze in Fargo with wind out of the north right now at 14 miles per hour. A look at our satellite radar composite. Not much to show you. We do have some clouds overhead. The infrared satellite not picking that up very well, but we'll be seeing some clouds off and on here for the next few hours. 77 in Fargo by around 4 o'clock. 70 in Grand Forks, some 60s up to the north, 60 degrees in Roseau, 64 there, 65 in Langdon. And hey, Wapaton may get to 80 degrees for a high today, so looking pretty good down in the Southern Valley. And more of us back into the 80s tomorrow. Today's high in Fargo, 79. Tomorrow, they'll look at that, 87 degrees for your high on Tuesday. A slight chance for some storms, a couple of them may be strong in the Northern Valley. I think most places should be on the dry side, though. There is that slight chance. Better bet for rain and thunder will be Wednesday night and into Thursday. And that's when our temperatures move back into the 70s. In time for the weekend, looks like Saturday looks pretty good. A high of 72 degrees and mostly sunny. Time now for traffic on the ones. Here's the Valley Today's Al Amit. Good morning, Lisa. Good morning, everyone. I'm uh, northbound on Interstate 29. Interstate 29 traffic northbound is uh, pretty thick this morning, pretty active southbound as well. A reminder for you, we still have that stalled car, the, the Cavalier or some uh, variant thereon. Uh, it's right at uh, 12th Avenue North and Interstate 29, the southbound lane, just as you get into that uh, construction zone. Make sure you're looking out for that thing. No lights, no flashers. Interstate 94 traffic pretty thick this morning as well. So is that on Main Avenue. Drive carefully today. Alamut Valley today traffic. 654 now on this Monday morning, and it's another back to school Monday here on the Valley today. Of course, the new year can bring back an old problem. We're talking this morning about bullying. It can happen in many different forms, and parents need to be talking with their kids about the consequences. Maybe their child is the bully. The Valley Today's Christy Larson joins us live in the studio with more. Good morning, Christy. Good morning, guys. It's one of those things that parents might not like to admit or even know of. 
if their child is the one who is bullying another kid. And it can come, like you said, in many different forms, whether it is verbal, maybe even physical, or online. So what we wanted to do is talk with some mental health professionals about some of those signs. If your child may be doing the bullying, and they said one of those things to look for is at a young age, if they're doing something like not sharing their toys, bossing other kids around, maybe even hurting them, that's when you need to make sure to start putting it in their mind that those things are not okay. Teaching them what is appropriate and what is not appropriate for their behavior. Then as also, it's part of the parent's job to show them what kind of a role model they need to be and what kind of a person they need to grow up to be. Parents being a role model for kids can be a really important part of how they grow up. Modeling our behavior is super important too. Kids look to us as their base and they learn how to respond and how to act to others based on how, how we're acting. And so if we're you know, real big into making posts to exclude others or if we're making posts that you know, hurt others or make negative comments on different sites about, are you kidding me, why, you know, whatever it might be, harsh comments. Our, our teens are watching us and they're learning from us. So don't be surprised that someday you get, a, you get an email or a call that says your child has been inappropriate, they've made harsh comments and your child's been called into the principal's office because they definitely learn that from us. Now, if you are starting to notice that maybe your young child or your teen is doing some of those things where they are bullying other kids, you need to take them aside and have a conversation with them. They said sometimes it's good to do that in a car when they feel like they're in a safe environment, but also where they can't escape, which Kyle and Lisa seems to be funny, but an effective method. And we have more advice up on valleynewslive.com this morning. All right, Christy Larson reporting live in studio for us. Thanks, Christy. A Valley family is working to create awareness of soldiers who struggle with PTSD, like their loved one who took his own life last month. The family of Brady Obergs knows the trouble all too well, and they talked about it yesterday during the Out of Darkness walk. They also urge people to ask for help for themselves or their loved ones if they notice something. The National Suicide Prevention Lifeline is up on your screen right now, 1-800-237-TALK. We also have resources posted on our website, valleynewslive.com. A Grafton, North Dakota man was treated at a Grand Forks hospital after being thrown from his car in a crash near Manville this weekend. 22-year-old Oswin Smith was driving on Highway 81 around 7 yesterday morning when he drifted off the road and troopers say he overcorrected, sliding across the highway into a ditch. His car then vaulted over a driveway and flipped over. Smith was not wearing a seatbelt. He was thrown from his car into a row of trees. A two-year-old from Dilworth, Minnesota, has gone through something most never will. And for that, she's been picked to represent the state at a national walk. At her one-year checkup, doctors discovered Noelle Searcy had severe hydrocephalus. It turned out she had a tumor on her brain stem, top blocking fluid from draining down to her spinal cord. She had surgery that same week, and since the procedure, her family is working to bring awareness to a condition most people have never heard of. We had a lot of questions, um, but not a lot of parents that we could go to for answers. Um, so we kind of started making some of those down in Minneapolis um, and gradually now have started to expand that here locally. Now the family leaves on Friday for an awareness walk that's being held in the Twin Cities. If you'd like to support their cause, we've got a link of how to do it at valleynewslive.com. Just click on this story. The Voice is about to be back, one of the most popular shows on television, and you'll have an extra reason to watch this season. A local musician is set to be on, Blind Joe. Here's a picture of him up on your screen right now, and yes, he made it to The Voice on NBC. You may know he's a totally blind singer-songwriter from the Fargo area. Tune in at 7 p.m. September 21st, that's a week from today, to see how he does. I'm thinking he's going to turn some chairs. Yeah, he's pretty incredible. He is a pretty amazing musician, and he's got such a great story. So, Let's get our answer now to our question of the morning on Facebook. Today's question, 58% of people said their summer vacation was pretty much ruined when this happened. The answer... Uh, when the boss bugs you. Why would they uh, bug you on vacation? I know. I don't like getting emails either. This is 
a phone call, but <laughs> yeah. my email's just as bad, usually. You can take part in our question of the morning by heading to our Valley News Live Facebook page every Monday through Friday. Of course, we invite you to join the conversation with us there throughout the day and probably some positive weather conversation yeah. going on on Facebook this morning with these warm temperatures. Yeah, it's looking good for us today, even into tomorrow. We'll start off this morning with some clouds right now, but we'll clear out and get some sunshine in between. Temperatures rising into the 60s and even some upper 70s in the Southern Valley. Thanks for waking up with the Valley today. Remember, we'll have more local news and weather for you right here in just 25 minutes. Have a great Monday, everybody. Of course, we will see you tomorrow morning starting at 4.30 a.m. right here on the Valley Today.